when BBS came out, I was doing these car side reviews where I would give initial impressions, reactions right after seeing the film. Oftentimes, I think people right after a movie's over, they're more optimistic and more positive, and then they let the film sink in for a day or two, and you know they sleep on it. And, and it either gets better or oftentimes it gets worse because they judge things more. With Batman vs Superman, it never really got worse for me, it never got better. But I think I gave it, and this is me not looking, you could probably find the video if it's up still. I think I gave it a 5 out of 10. I think a lot of ideas were rushed. I think Wonder Woman had no place in that film. We, we didn't know her in that universe. We, of course, know Wonder Woman outside of the movie. You know, we, we know her from the comics, from the cartoons, from all these different iterations. But a movie's job, especially the first in a new series, is to establish the character like the audience doesn't know who it is. I think that's truly important. And not knowing this Princess Diana, having her jump in willy-nilly at the end, it didn't deserve the applause, I, to me. It didn't deserve the tip of the hat. It didn't earn it. It also didn't earn the death of Superman, who in the previous film was the Man of Steel. You know, he, he was Kal-El, he hadn't really gotten the label as the, the, the patriot, the, the earth savior, the, the god, you know, he, he was just, he was a guy that caused a lot of damage, it's probably killed a lot of people fighting Zod, snapped a neck or two, and he had a lot of growing to do. And I defended Man of Steel because I happened to enjoy that movie quite a bit. And, and all these people that, you know, were all pissed that he killed someone, it's like, yeah, he's not he's not the man of he's not Superman yet. He's still he's still learning and growing. That's why the movie's not called Superman. It's called Man of Steel. And the second movie's going to address that. And the second movie's going to really build his character up into the smiling, happy, proud, all-American boy who 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 ends up saving the day and then saving cats and trees and all this stuff. But no, we didn't even get Superman 2. We didn't get Man of Steel 2. We got a jump into BVS. He's very moody, he's very mad, he's upset with people, they're not appreciative. So we never even, we, we totally leapfrogged the Superman aspect. The reason I'm dwelling on this is I, I did that car side review, but then I also did a rant a week or so later about my movie experience, which is lost in the internet. It's gone to the world. Uh, I, I, I have two channels and I pulled off a lot of my R-rated, you know, swearing rants and moved them to my second channel, Adam Olinger. And somehow that one missed the transition over and it's just gone now. I, I deleted it or something. And I'm, I'm kind of ashamed by that because it was a pretty funny story of my movie experience. But I will just summarize a couple of the highlights of what happened when I went to the theater March 25th, 2016. I don't know if you know this or not, but I like movies. I like getting in line. I like the pageantry of the theaters. That experience is gone now. I think it's been dead for a while since, you know, people have been sitting on their phones through entire feature length pictures. That, that kind of ruined it for me. Anyway, I, I was excited. Sure. It, I, I felt it was rushed. I felt they were trying to be an MCU too quickly without establishing a new Batman for the universe in his own picture, without giving Superman a, a true follow-up film first, without giving Wonder Woman a film first. Th there was a lot going against it. Snyder had a lot of characters to build up quickly. Even though we know these icons off the picture, once again, you still have to lay the groundwork. That foundation has to be strong. So I'm there with my buddies. We're chatting it up, waiting for my brother to show up. He, he doesn't often go to movies with me, and when he does, it's kind of a nice treat. You know, a little, little brother bonding experience. And I think he also liked The Man of Steel. So we were, we were looking forward to this. Snyder has rarely let me down. I didn't like Sucker Punch. Thought that was, once again, a narrative disaster. Beautifully filmed. Loved the Dawn of the Dead remake. Absolutely adore 300. He's, he's doing really well for me. So we go into the theater finally after chatting it up for a long time. Uh, get our seats. I think we're in the we're in the middle, upper middle, where I kind of where I like to live. Things started out on a really good note, I thought. It addresses Man of Steel's ending, all the destruction and chaos. It puts it right into BVS's world. We see Wayne, Bruce Wayne, sitting down there, seeing the, the buildings go down, seeing the explosions, the smoke. I have no idea. I have to say, though, I have no idea why he's got people still working while this is going on. Like, he's got dudes inside the building looking outside, and there's just, like, explosions three blocks down. He's looking out with his cup of coffee. He's like, man, it's really coming down out there. As in, people are really coming down out of those buildings and dying. 
we should maybe pack up for the day. But Bruce Wayne on a typical suicide mission sprints full bore into the smoke cloud. You know, he finds a fallen friend, looks up and sees Man of Steel, soups, and he's pissed. Rightfully so. Who's this guy think he is flying in here, causing all this destruction, all this pain and anguish? And so we, we jump ahead. We, we, we see the buildup. You know, Wayne's getting jacked. He's getting pumped up. He, he's got a suit of armor. He's souping out the car. He's getting everything ready so that he can knock the crap out of Superman instead of talk to him. Because Bruce Wayne, master detective, can't take 10 minutes to do some research on who Cal el possibly is, where he lives, who raised him, any of the things, you know, like a detective does. Batman, I'm pretty sure, is supposed to be like the world's greatest detective. I didn't give him the tagline. Some writer did, and they kind of went with it for, you know, decade after decade. I can turn my brain off to that, though. I can even forgive the really bizarre Lex Luthor by Jesse Eisenberg. Haha, -ha, it's the greatest matchup in the history of the world. The Dark Knight versus the Son of Krypton. I love bringing people together. He was just so odd. There's the piss jar scene where Superman's sitting in a courtroom that blows up. He's just standing there and it's super surreal. It's like, whoa, are they framing him for this? Is this some conspiracy now? And we have a lot of layers to this. But then immediately in the next scene, the news anchor is like, well, he clearly didn't do it. And then we just move on. There's tons of that kind of stuff where it feels like Snyder's building to something bigger. But because there's 20 storylines going on, nothing has a chance to breathe and half of the stuff doesn't need to be in there. Especially the doomsday crap at the end. But I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Where things really go off the rails. And, and, and this was perfect in the theater when I saw it. Because my brother gets up and he goes to the bathroom quickly. And as he's leaving, Bruce Wayne looks like a boring scene. He's sitting at his computer, I believe, doing some research. This might have been the part, but I'm not entirely sure, where he opens his computer and he finds out what's on the drive that Lex Luthor had. And it has all these personalized files with custom icons for each of the heroes. You got Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, all have their Justice League symbols. Like, like he hired out a graphic artist to come in and do these. Either that or, or Lex is, is pretty good with Photoshop. Either way, hilarious thinking how this came about. I need to give them symbols. I need to give them logos. They have to be bigger than the world. They have to be bigger than the brand itself. So I'm going to give them names. I'm going to give them symbols. We're going to put them in folders. We need to have websites. We need to have Twitter followers. We need to have a full social media presence for each of these superheroes. Haha. -ha. Falls asleep, wakes up in a Mad Max post-apocalyptic world where he's fighting... You know, these alien flying creatures, he's got a freaking SMG, he goes down in a hallway. So he's fighting, he's beating guys up, he gets captured. Now we got Superman down in a hallway, he's shackled up, you know, Superman's smiling, he's evil. And that's when my brother walks back. Like, this is, this is like a three minute span, this all happens. And he looks at me, looks at the screen, looks back at me, he's like, what the hell is going on? And I look at him and I go, I don't know. We sit there perplexed for another minute. Then Bruce Wayne wakes up and I think Flash is now in a portal and he's warning him about something. And then he goes. And then Jake, my brother, turns to me again. He's like, what did I miss? And I turn to him, I go, nothing. Absolutely nothing. You have the same context as I do. And then it's never addressed again in the entirety of the picture, and I don't think it's addressed in Justice League, not that it matters, it's just a complete narrative disaster. And that kind of logic creeps through the whole film. So, if we see that kind of narration, that kind of story structure in Zack Snyder's Justice League, holy hell, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be wacky, complete shenanigans. And I can't wait to watch it. Not because, once again, I think it's good. If you love Batman v Superman, that's perfectly fine too. I know plenty of people that think the Star Wars prequels are really good. I can't fathom how or why, but that's our opinions. Movies are subjective. We can like and dislike other things, just don't... Don't think you need to come white knight for Zack Snyder, because I think he is a great filmmaker. I just think that the stories need a lot of work. And I know he didn't write this. I don't know if he even wrote the script for that. I, I think it was David S. Goyer who 
who's really all over the place. He's probably one of the most inconsistent writers there is in Hollywood. Also have to point out that when Superman's fighting Doomsday at the end, like he couldn't have just thrown the kryptonite spear at him. I feel like there's a lot of different ways they could have killed this dude. And it just, it just felt really unearned once again. And then to immediately jump to the coffin scene where the dirt comes up again. It's like, what, what the hell was the point of any of that? The, the zero stakes. Absolutely none. I'm gonna leave it there. I apologize that I lost the initial BVS rant. I mean, it was destroyed. I deleted it. I had to have during the transition. People have asked. That's why That's why I'm doing this video and because it's somewhat timely again with the HBO Max stuff. I know my previous version talked about a lot of non-related Batman v Superman stuff, such as the order of uh, buffalo wings I, I had placed and they, they went lost. I, can't, I just can't recreate that because that was that was a magical moment in time that I couldn't possibly get to the emotional point that I was then where it completely broke me. So thank you for watching this kind of nonsensical, pointless thing. But I mean, it's YouTube. A lot of the stuff that people digest on there is completely useless information. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hopefully still being around in a year on the channel doing this to feud Zack Snyder's version versus Joss Whedon's. I think it's an even match. You know, I think, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a good time. All right, take care. Thanks for watching the video. I try to put out new stuff on a weekly basis, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I have a second channel full of more shenanigans, and I'm also on Twitch now. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of options, and hopefully you can find these channels via links on this video itself, if I did my job correctly. Otherwise, they might be in the description below, or you can just visit the channel page. All right, take care.